there's nothing quite like biting into a perfectly baked French tart. The buttery crust, the silky filling, the delicate flavors. Join me as I guide you through step by step in making your own French tarts that will rival any patisserie. My name is Kim, founder and designer of Cooking Gifts at Co. When you open the kit, you'll find our signature instruction packet along with a perforated baking mat, a piping bag with nozzles, a candy thermometer, and six specialty tart rings. In addition, you'll need these kitchen staples, a standing mixer or an electric hand mixer, small saucepan, parchment paper or plastic wrap, a rolling pin, baking sheet, sharp paring knife, whisk, spatula, and a double boiler, or a medium saucepan with a heat safe bowl. The fundamentals of any beautiful French tart often include these three components. One, a perfectly crisp and structured pastry shell. Two, a creamy filling like a custard, ganache, or a pastry cream. And three, an iconic meringue topping. As a fellow home baker, I know just how important it is to choose your own adventure. Our kits are designed so that you can choose the recipe card that inspires you and use it with our step-by-step -step instructions. So if you haven't already, grab a recipe card, which doubles as your shopping list, and let's get started. Today, I'm going to use our classic lemon tart recipe as the example, but follow the preparation instructions for whichever recipe card you chose. This can be a long process, so you can always make the pastry note the night before. Let's get to it. Place cold butter cubes, powdered sugar, salt, and vanilla in a large deep bowl. With a stand mixer or electric hand mixer, begin mixing on low to avoid a cloud of powdered sugar in your face. Once it starts to come together, crank up the speed to high and mix for two minutes until it becomes a creamy and smooth paste. Next, separate your egg yolks. My cousin taught me an easy way to do this. You simply run the egg whites through your fingers. Once that's done, make sure to keep your egg whites aside. We'll be using those later. Add in the egg yolks and gently combine on low speed. Use a spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl and make sure everything is evenly mixed. Now it's time to add the flour and any other dry ingredients for the other recipes like cinnamon or cocoa powder. Mix on low speed and make sure to keep an eye on it. As soon as all the flour is incorporated and the dough is thoroughly mixed, turn off the mixer. Roughly shape the dough into a ball and cut it in half. Take one half of the dough and start shaping it into a smooth disc on a piece of parchment paper. To prevent sticking, place a large piece of parchment paper or plastic wrap on top. With your rolling pin, start in the center of the dough and use even pressure to roll the dough away from you. Rotate the dough 90 degrees and repeat, turning the dough until it reaches about an even 1 8 inch thickness. Remember, a thin and even crust is essential for a perfectly baked and delicate tart shell. If you're unsure how thick your dough is, you can use a knife to cut a small clean edge around different points of the perimeter and check the height of the cuts. Adjust your rolling accordingly until you've reached that even thickness. Now it's time to chill. Using a baking sheet, slide the parchment paper and dough off the counter and into the fridge. Repeat the entire process with the second half of your dough and chill both for at least an hour or overnight. Now let's start building our tart shells. First, remove one half of the chilled dough from the fridge. If it's a little too cold and brittle, it's important to let it thaw for a few minutes until it's pliable. Once it's ready, flip the dough over and carefully peel off any parchment paper to prevent sticking or tearing. Grab a baking sheet and line it with that perforated baking mat. This will help ensure that our tart shells bake evenly and come out perfect every time. Before cutting the dough, let's arrange our tart rings. Make sure to leave enough room for three 11 by one and a quarter strips. Once you've got them laid out, cut out the circles and place the dough with the tart ring on the baking mat. Now it's time to cut the three strips and then square off the ends. Lift the strip and line the inside of the tart ring. Lightly press the strip down and against the sides of the ring. You can curl the excess of the strip on the inside and with a paring knife, trim at a 1 8 inch overlap. Finally, you can use the warmth of your fingers to press and blend together that seam. Make sure to repeat the process for the other half of the dough.
First, preheat your oven to a toasty 320 degrees Fahrenheit. While that's warming up, pop your baking sheet with all six tart rings in the fridge for 10 minutes. You want that dough to be chilled, not frozen, so you can get a clean and precise trim. Once your dough is chilled, grab your trusty paring knife and now comes the most satisfying part. Carefully trim off the excess dough around the edges of each ring. Turn your knife horizontally and flush with the edge of the ring for a smooth and even cut. I always find this part weirdly satisfying. Bake your perfectly trimmed tarts in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. But be careful not to let them turn golden brown. We want them to have a delicate pale color like a shortbread cookie. Follow the recipe card to create the filling for your tart. Once the tart shells are cool, you can remove the perforated tart rings. While the filling is still warm, grab a measuring cup and carefully ladle the filling into the tart shells. Be sure to fill each shell to the top without spilling over. You can use the back of a spoon to gently smooth out any imperfections. No matter what recipe card you chose, allow the filling to cool to room temperature to set. Lastly, we'll create a classic meringue topping. Start by sliding and adjusting the candy thermometer to fit a small saucepan, making sure the tip isn't touching the bottom. Add sugar and water and place on the stovetop over high heat. While the sugar syrup is cooking, it's time to get your egg whites ready. Grab your electric hand mixer or stand mixer and make sure the bowl and the beater are completely grease and moisture free. Trust me, even a tiny bit of egg yolk or a drop of water will ruin the meringue. As you start whisking the egg whites on low speed, keep an eye on the stove top. That sugar and water should be boiling by now, but be patient and wait until the mixture reaches 250 degrees on the candy thermometer. This is the exact temperature you need to achieve the perfect meringue. At this point, the egg whites should look like a thick, foamy bubble bath. While still mixing, slowly begin to spoon the hot sugar syrup into the bowl one tablespoon at a time. Keep whisking it on high speed for a full six to eight minutes until the mixture cools and reaches that consistency of old fashioned shaving cream. If the texture appears spongy when piped, simply return it to the mixer and whisk until smooth. Next, we need to get our piping bag ready. Secure the coupler and a nozzle onto the piping bag. For easy filling, place the piping bag in a drinking glass and fold the bag over the rim. Now let's get decorating. Let your creativity shine and have fun with your tarts. Use the Silky Smooth Meringue to add your own unique touch, whether it's simple dollops or an intricate design. And don't forget to add some extra flair with toppings like fruit, edible flowers, colorful candy, or even crunchy roasted nuts. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. Just drop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, I would love to see how your French tarts turned out. If you have a few minutes, it would mean the world to me if you could share your experience through the link below. And as a special thank you, the first 100 reviewers will receive a special gift from me. Be sure to check out the details in the description.